Good morning, <clears throat> and uh, thank you for the opportunity to meditate together, for all of us to be together for this period of time. And um, one of part of the art of meditation is how we prepare ourselves for meditation. And there are two things to consider, which are maybe could be seen as contradictory, but I hope we can hold them together. And that is, uh, a lot of mindfulness meditation is about recognizing what's happening. And so to sit down, as we sit down, just before sitting down, uh, first sitting down, to recognize how we are, what's happening to, to us, and to be cognizant of how we are physically, mentally, emotionally, um, circumstantially, where we are, and to recognize that. And and to see it clearly. And the second is uh, to reflect a little bit about what inspires you, what brings you a sense of joy or happiness or gladness um, in the opportunity to sit down to meditate. To um, um, Certainly it brings me gladness to know that we're together for these minutes and all these names and all of you that I see uh, on the chat and other people, and just knowing that there's so many people coming to sit and we're sharing this uh, brings me some delight and joy. Uh, it brings me some joy to know that uh, we're going to engage in a tradition that people have been doing and a practice people have been doing for uh, millennia, really, and, um, and have found deeply moving and important. And because people have meditated before us, uh, we have the meditation, we have this practice to do. And it brings me some joy to be able to uh, engage in a practice where we settle on ourselves, where we show up, we wake up to what's happening, that um, there is an alternative to being stuck. There is an alternative to uh, being swept away by stress, distress, fear, challenges. It is a place where you can come and sit down. So you might have your own ways of imagining or uh, reflecting for both these things, just an honest recognition of how you are and uh, the goodness of sitting down here or the faith, the inspiration you have that might uh, not override how you are, but put it in a context so when you sit down, it's a little bit easier to just sit and be here. So to take an upright or a appropriate posture for yourself. And maybe closing your eyes. And you might, uh, with your eyes closed, imagine yourself actually sitting or laying or wherever you are right now. Imagine yourself meditating. Maybe in your mind's eye you have an image of yourself and the posture you're in. Maybe a little sense of how you're in a particular space and room. And that here you are. And, and perhaps in sitting here quietly with an image of yourself sitting here, perhaps reflecting about the preciousness of this opportunity to meditate not always that people have this chance. And that for these few minutes, perhaps, maybe the goodness or the, the rightness of just feeling safe enough, comfortable enough, hopefully, to spend a few minutes with the breathing, with being present, and to feel the goodness of this or the fortune of this. or Let it be like a little foundation of gladness as we sit here. And then within this body of yours, in, there's your breathing. And you might even, if you have an ability to visualize or to think a little bit, kind of just a little bit for a moment, uh, imagine yourself actually doing what you're doing. Imagine yourself sitting here being a breathing person. Maybe 
your mind's eye an image maybe from outside of looking at yourself standing nearby and just noticing the movements of the chest the belly noticing here's a breathing person and that here this is where the attention will be centered And then perhaps letting go of this imagery and just kind of settle into doing what you imagined. Settle, settling into f- feeling, sensing the body breathing. And this movements of the body breathing, the alternation of in and out of the breath. In the context of all, everything, an honest assessment of how you are and the challenges you might have, and the opportunity to a little bit put aside the ideas, past and future, the context of what's happening to you outside of the meditation, and the opportunity to sit in the middle of it all and focus on your breathing. You might take a few long, gentle breaths, relaxing as you exhale. Breathing in and breathing out. And letting your breathing return to normal. And taking a few moments to feel, experience your whole body in whatever way that's available to you. Perhaps if the body's a little bit difficult to connect to, perhaps feeling the contact of your clothes against your body. or the contact of your chair or floor or cushion or bed. The contact of your hands against your body And maybe feeling the three-dimensionality, the substantiality of your physical body. Perhaps the weight of your body. Relaxing into that weight, sense of weight, to be a little bit more grounded or centered, rooted here. And then within the body, as part of the body, being aware of the body breathing as if it's the most valuable thing you could do now, as if it's the home or the place of well-being, of goodness, where the simplicity of just breathing is all you need to do. Your 
attention on your breathing and everything else just flows by. Everything else is just allowed to be in the periphery. And for now, feeling the breathing and how the inhalation is experienced differently than the exhalation. How the beginning of the exhalation is different than the end. Gently, softly, receptively with your breathing.
And as you're sitting with your breathing, if you can make a subtle adjustment to your breathing so that it's a little bit more pleasant. Maybe it's allowing yourself to breathe a little slower or deeper or shifting by relaxing, having your breathing in one part of the chest to another or into the belly where you feel the movement. Or you simply notice the pleasant part of breathing. Maybe some part of the physical sensations of breathing have some degree of pleasantness as part of it. And if you do feel some pleasant experience of breathing, enjoy it. And see if you can enjoy it in such a way that your mind becomes quieter, that your thinking slows down, or becomes thinner. And if you don't find the breathing particularly pleasant, perhaps as you exhale, the end of the exhale can be a time to gently let the thinking mind become quieter, softer. And in that quiet, you're ready to experience the inhale
And then as we come to the end of the sitting, take a few moments to feel or recognize what is it that that's good? What is positive that's present for you now? Are you a little bit calmer than you were before? More settled? More connected to yourself or to reality? Is there a deeper sense of contentment? Or ease or even freedom? Or perhaps maybe not that you've recognized it yet. Maybe a little bit greater capacity for love, for care, compassion. In whatever way this meditation has been beneficial for you, no matter how subtle and small, take a few moments now to consider how that can be a basis for doing something beneficial for the world today. If you consider the day that you'll be living, based on how you're feeling now, what would make sense to do? What would you like to do that would make the world a little bit a better place for someone else? It might be just appreciating someone that you know. If you have the opportunity, maybe doing someone's dishes. Or maybe cleaning up the street, a little bit in front of your house, if there's a little bit of trash. Or maybe it's making a donation to an organization that's helping people who are hungry now. What is the goodness that you can bring into the world that might flow from your meditation today? And then, may it be so. So that the way of ending the, the meditation with reflection about what you can bring to benefit the world is a variation of an ancient Buddhist tradition of dedicating the merit of whatever practice activity we've done, whatever good things we've done in the world. And, um, you know, we could always just keep saying the same thing, may the merit or the of our good deeds be the benefit of others and let it just be kind of wishful thinking and some invisible way that that happens. Or we could actually specifically consider and how it could spread from us in ways that are direct and and, uh, clearly seen. And so um, either way is great and I offered you the second way today. So, so this is the fourth 
uh, talk in the series on the faculty of concentration, of samadhi. And there's a, as I said at the first day, there's samadhi has two very general meaning, meanings. As a faculty, which is what, you know, the immediate topic of consideration, it's a particular functionality of the mind. It's probably maybe a particular place in the brain that is able to be settled, focused, gathered together. At least that's what the ancient Buddhists thought. Or maybe it's not a particular place. Maybe it's just a, a combined functioning of different mental faculties that work in harmony to get us settled into the second meaning of samadhi, which is a state, a generalized state of being. Sometimes people call it a state of mind. And uh, samadhi is um, uh, a state in which we're um, fully present, fully engaged in what's happening. Uh, There's a long tradition of calling that being absorbed. That involves an absorption. Um, Maybe we should be a little careful using that word because of the idea that it's, when we are absorbed, there's also maybe sometimes a sense of losing ourselves in the experience, maybe an excessive merging in the experience where there isn't a clarity of attention and awareness of what's happening. And um, I think that as concentration deepens in meditation, um, the way that I understand it for myself and from the ancient teachings of the Buddha, there is a greater and greater clarity of attention. The mindfulness becomes brighter um, in fact, the deepest uh, states of what's usually called absorptions, jhana, have a very clear uh, 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 form of awareness or mindfulness as part of them. And, um, and this state of being fully present for, fully aware of something, with the mind not distracted, and not, dis- uh, not fragmented by things, and this undistracted presence has a lot to do with what samadhi is, that's continuous through time. The, um, now what gets interesting is that um, as we kind of really get present for something and get organized and unified for something, there's a number of things which are not happening and a number of things which begin to happen. What's not happening is that the busy, active thinking mind is not perpetuating itself. It's a, oftentimes it's a, it's a self-perpetuating machine, the, the mind, the thinking mind. And, and uh, the faster we think, uh, especially if we have negative thoughts, the more stressful it is for the mind, both directly because of the, the strength of the thinking, but also because of what's being said. It can be sometimes be like little daggers we stick each other with, ourselves with, with our thoughts. And, um, and as you know, I've maybe said, one of the leading sources of all kinds of psychological problems is the rumination, is the uh, regular, continuous things we're saying to ourselves. And, um, and that's a particular function of the mind, to, say, to, to think a lot, to have imagery a lot, and just kind of be spinning these stories and ideas, keeps going, going. And part of what happens in samadhi is the mind gets settled and quiet and unified. There is a quieting of the thinking mind. And then we're spared from some of the stories and beliefs and criticisms and and, uh, undermining thoughts, you know, uh, that we have. And there's more space in the mind for other things. And, um, And so once the kind of the irritating or the or the stressful kinds of thoughts have quiet, then this unified feeling of being present starts feeling more and more uh, good, to to use a non-technical word. And uh, and, um, so one of the things that falls away or gets quiets down um, are thoughts, feelings of discontent, thoughts of irritation, thoughts of boredom. Um, All these other, these things are, think of them as activities of the mind. Nothing is inherently boring except for the activities of the mind that evaluates it that way. Nothing is uh, irritating except for the activities, the thoughts, the ideas that the mind has that kind of interprets it that way, understands it that way. Um, And uh, there's all these things that make us kind of feel, you know, kind of dissatisfaction, uncomfortable, irritated, um, bored, 
wanting, greedy, wanting something else, expectations, all these things that have a kind of a stressful effect on our mind and body. That um, as the mind, as we allow the mind to settle and get quieter, those begin to uh, quiet as well. And the more concentrated we can become, more fully engaged and settled and just allowing particular experience we're focusing on to fill awareness, to be the subject we're doing, and the mind gets quieter, clearer, all this afflictive kind of thoughts and ideas falls away. And if there's no boredom, if there's no irritation, if there's no dissatisfaction uh, going on, then we're just here in a deeper, deeper settled way, in a way that can feel like we're deeply contented, deeply satisfied, deeply at peace, deeply uh, happy. And part of that is um, uh, not because we're making ourselves happy or making ourselves contented, uh, it's just the goodness and the peace and the relief of not having the, um, these afflictive kind of thoughts, ideas going on. In the teachings of the Buddha, these are particularly, um, uh, he particularly signals out the five hindrances, that when they quiet down, uh, it just, there's a, there's a sense of goodness. He calls it gladness and, or, and joy and happiness that can be there, just because it's so good to not be afflicted anymore and turn the relief of it or the fullness of it. I also believe that, um, that as these afflictive kind of overlay of our, what's going on finally begins to get quiet, not an easy thing to do, but finally get quiet and as we get more concentrated, uh, more settled, more unified, that um, uh, uh, there's a goodness from within, a place of deeper sense of goodness, well-being, that has a chance to bubble up. And the image the Buddha actually uses for this deeper well-being is an underground, you know, underwater, in a lake, an underwater fountain of water that from the bottom of the lake flows up into the water and spreads out the refreshing, nice water into the, new water into the lake. And this idea that there's this wellspring or this spring, a fountain deep inside of us of well-being that can well up and fill us. That's not something we're doing, making, forcing. Um, um, it's more like we're getting out of the way when the hindrances and these afflictive thoughts have finally quieted down and we kind of learn how to open and be fully present and make space for something to come in, space to be influenced by the depths of our what's good inside of us, then you can sometimes feel this wellspring of of joy or well-being or happiness. That's one way of experiencing it. Everyone has a little different way. And, um, and so a part of what constant, uh, this samadhi practice and some is, is, is a practice of letting go, but I think more profoundly, it's a practice of getting out of the way, really kind of allowing ourselves to trust something really deep inside and get quiet enough that we begin allowing this to flow. Now, certainly initially as we begin this movement of trusting something deep inside, some of what happens is the purification process. Some of what's been buried deep inside, grief and anger and sorrow and different things, um, you know, it need, they need to kind of come out and have their time in, in the sun of awareness and, and kind of empty out. Uh, so, you know, we have to learn that process and be patient with it and hopefully know not to add afflictive thoughts on top of it, but just feel inspired that it's so good to have this stuff finally come out and so it can kind of dissipate resolve itself, heal itself. But this deeper movement then it's of feeling at some point the goodness that wells up, the well-being, the gladness that wells up, that's there, that flows, that tingles, that is warm, that is soft, that is quiet, that uh, it feels connected, feels like we're home, feel cozy. Um, the image that I kind of like, love for um, uh, getting really settled and feeling the this part of the joy that can happen in meditation. I spend a lot of time focusing on the breath. So the breath is kind of like this rhythm. And sometimes I feel like it's like uh, petting the cat. And, um, and so, you know, I don't just kind of tap the cat. I don't just take a fist and kind of press down hard of the cat. I gently kind of 
uh, stroke the cat, and if I st- uh, the cat starts purring. If I stop stroking the cat, the cat stops purring. I have to start stroking it again, the cat purrs. And um, so the same way we stay with the breath, and the breathing is like the stroke of stroking the cat, or the awareness is like the stroking of the of the of the cat. We're staying with the breathing, and at some point, it's not automatic, and it's not something you can force. But as we get more and more settled, there can be a sense of of the, the, the whole system of who we are, in an, again a non-technical idea that everyone has experiences this differently. But the system, our body and mind, begins to purr, begins to kind of feel good and nice and light. And, and this recognition of goodness, recognition of pleasure, recognition, recognition of what feels beautiful or feels pur- purrful, purringful, um, is, um, is part of what supports samadhi practice. And uh, without expectation, without demand, without striving, but being open to start feeling the goodness, the well-being that comes when we settled and allowing that well-being to influence us, meaning allowing ourselves to get out of the way and let it kind of move through us. The Buddha talked about letting it suffuse us, the whole body. So this is part of uh, samadhi, is this uh, sense of joy and happiness that can come from practice. So thank you. And uh, I hope that um, you have a wonderful day or wonderful next 24 hours. And I hope that uh, you, your inner life provides you with nourishment and well-being. Thank you.